So in this video, I'll be showing you how I use my Raspberry Pi as a Wi-Fi extender to cure dead Wi-Fi zones in my house. So we'll be using an amazingly free software called Rasp AP, which I assume is short for Raspberry Pi access point. So I'm going to be setting this up in the most simple configuration, which is basically to connect the Raspberry Pi to the internet via an ethernet cable and then use the Raspberry Pi's onboard Wi-Fi chip to transmit the Wi-Fi signal out. So you could try to use the, the Wi-Fi chip on the Raspberry Pi to both receive an internet connection from your router and then send out another Wi-Fi signal for others, but it's actually quite hard to do. So it's easier to use the ethernet connection, which is what I'm gonna be doing in this video. So my configuration is I have a power line adapter two floors downstairs from me, which connects to my modem. I then have the other end of the power line adapter up here on, in the loft. And then I use this power line adapter, which connects to a small desktop switch and then I connect my Raspberry Pi to the desktop switch. So the ethernet cable obviously provides internet to the Raspberry Pi and then the Raspberry Pi then transmit a Wi-Fi signal around my loft, which allows my phone and everything else to have a good, nice, strong Wi-Fi signal. The software is completely free, allowing the Raspberry Pi to be used as a Wi-Fi extender, but that's not all. It also sets up an amazing web interface which you can use for a whole bunch of cool things like looking at your internet usage, looking at the strength of your wireless signal, having a look at what devices are connected and much, much more. So really good on that. App. And then you can also add things like setting up a VPN service on your network and it can even block ads similar to what the Pi Hole does. So considering this is all completely free, for me, it's absolutely amazing. So, all right, in order for you to set this up yourself, what you're gonna need is obviously a Raspberry Pi with a compatible operating system already installed in Raspberry Pi. So the operating systems that you can use are either Raspberry Pi OS, which is the standard one that you can get off their website, Ambien, which I've never used before, Debian, which is the famous one, or Ubuntu, which again is famous. So you've got an option of four operating systems that you can use. I'm just gonna use in this video Raspberry Pi OS because that's the one I'm used to. All right, so for the installation process, you need to boot into your Raspberry Pi and then open up the command terminal. Then follow the instructions on the website here. Basically, it's just four copy and paste instructions. And then once you've done that, for example, you just need to run the upgrade on the Raspberry Pi then configure the wireless LAN settings, i.e. your Wi-Fi settings on the Pi, which you do that using sudo raspi config. Again, basically just these instructions that you see on the screen. And then finally, you're just gonna add one quick install command there, and it's gonna install the whole of the software onto your Raspberry Pi. During the installation process, you're gonna get hit with a whole bunch of different prompts asking you if you wanna install this or install that. You can just hit yes to all of them if you wanna swing through it. Otherwise, take a look at what each one's installing. In my installation, I just skipped the part about OpenVPN as well as the ad blocking service because I've already got that on my Pi hole. But if you want that, you can just hit yes for all of them and that's probably the easiest way to install it. it takes probably about 10, 15 minutes. I don't know, depending on your internet connection. And it's literally that easy to install. So now your Raspberry Pi is pretty much ready to go. It's all fully set up. So let's just run through how to actually connect to the Raspberry Pi. So my desktop computer doesn't have Wi-Fi, so I'll use my phone here to connect to it. Go into your Wi-Fi settings and find this Wi-Fi name, raspi-webgui, connect to it, and then the Wi-Fi password is capital C, change, so change me with a capital C, capital M. Then you just need to click onto the Wi-Fi settings and select any option that you can see, which will allow you to configure your Wi-Fi. If you can't see this option, then just ensure that you're connected to the Wi-Fi, then open up a browser and type in the IP address, which is 10.3.141.1. It'll be the same IP address for all of us. And then you want to go into these settings and change your password in the hotspot settings. Once you've done that, you're pretty much ready to go. So you've got a now secure Wi-Fi signal. What I did was as well, you can actually go in and change the Wi-Fi name itself. And that's it. That's the end of the video. Nice and simple, super easy. And for me, works really, really well. Quick side note, it is a lot more complex if you don't want to use an Ethernet connection and you just want to have the Raspberry Pi picking up your Wi-Fi signal from your router and then transmitting it. It's a lot more difficult, you know, it's also a lot slower because you've got one chip that's having to both transmit and receive. So what you could do, which is a bit more easier, is to get a USB Wi-Fi dongle and then use that either to receive or transmit the Wi-Fi signal and then use the onboard chip to do the opposite. So you can do that. I'm not gonna do that in this video because I just have the ethernet connection. If you manage to get it work using a USB dongle, let me know. All right guys, take care.